From today, banks in the United States and individuals uh, will be barred from accepting bond payments from the Russian government. This means Russia will be pushed closer to a potential default. The U.S. Treasury Department says it will let this key sanction waiver benefiting American investors expire. Let's speak now to our Russia correspondent, Julia Chapman, um, about these issues and more. Julia, thank you very much for your time here. Um, you know, in terms of what the EU was discussing yesterday uh, when it comes to um, the import of Russian oil. Do we know how far those discussions have come? Well, we understand that Hungary is still the big holdout when it comes to sanctioning Russian oil exports. And so far, there doesn't seem to be any progress on convincing Prime Minister Viktor Orban that this is the right thing to do. Hungary, uh, like many other European countries, is very dependent on Russian energy. Uh, but Hungary has a closer relationship with the Russian government and has been uh, much more reluctant to impose this particular sanction uh, on the the Kremlin, although of course Hungary has agreed with the previous five rounds of sanctions, but undoubtedly hitting Russia's energy exports uh, would be one of the most impactful ways that the West could do damage to the Russian economy. It is hugely dependent on its exports, uh, particularly of gas and oil, but of all commodities, uh, they make up an enormous part of the Russian budget, including the chest that is paying for uh, its activi uh, activities in Ukraine. Uh, so certainly uh, analysts, economists say this would be one of the most painful things that could uh, be done to the Russian economy, but it is being proving very difficult uh, to find any kind of unanimity uh, among European countries on whether this is something that should happen. Mm, and especially because there are some of those countries who do need oil at the end of the day. And um, I believe they were also discussing during the EU sitting yesterday that, of course, an alternative would have to be made um, in terms of how they get oil into their country before they just ban Russian oil. Yes, undoubtedly. Uh, but oil, for its part, uh, is much easier to replace than gas because gas pipelines flow uh, physically from Russia to Europe, whereas oil is often shipped in barrels and there certainly are other sources where one could procure that oil. So, uh, yes, European countries looking intensely at where else they can find oil, how they can replace uh, Russian stocks, the provisions that many European countries have uh, lucrative contracts for uh, with Russia. Russia that is contributing billions of U.S. dollars to the Russian economy every day, uh, really paling in comparison uh, to the amount of money that is being sent uh, in military aid to Ukraine. So we're hearing a lot of voices in Europe calling for the EU to go further, insisting that an embargo on Russian oil uh, would be the most impactful thing that they could do. Mm. Uh, tell me, uh, Julia, about uh, the news that Nike is also pulling out. I mean, it's a, an American brand, and uh, the U.S. has been quite clear in terms of where they stand with the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, but tell me about this particular move now by Nike. Well, this hasn't yet been confirmed by Nike, but it is being reported today by a Russian newspaper here that Nike has declined to extend its franchise agreement with one of its biggest franchisers here in Russia. There are different owners of different parts of the Nike brand all around the country, uh, but the biggest one, it is understood, will no longer be allowed to provide uh, Nike products to the Russian market. Now, Nike is one of hundreds of brands, uh, international brands, that suspended their operations operations uh, back in late February, early March, many of them watching and waiting to see how the situation in Ukraine panned out before making a firm and final decision on whether to continue operations in uh, Russia. We are now seeing more and more deciding that it is simply no longer tenable to operate here, either for moral reasons, but also logistical ones because of the sanctions against Russia. Supply chains have become even more complicated than they were beforehand because of the pandemic. Uh, so shipments to Russia have become much more fraught and companies like Nike, we understand, uh, McDonald's has decided to cease its operations, selling to a local uh, owner instead. Uh, a number of other brands as well, the uh, French car maker Renault, one of the biggest. So we're starting to see now many companies realizing that this uh, so-called special military operation in Ukraine isn't going away very quickly uh, and it is no longer desirable to remain here in Russia. Mm -hmm.
uh, you know, no longer desirable to remain in Russia. We've seen how the rest of the world has been affected uh, by the war. Uh, in South Africa, we have um, our petrol prices grow going up, like, uh, you know, uh, to a point where consumers really cannot handle. Uh, tell me how it's affecting Russia itself, if it's affecting it. Well, certainly petrol prices here in Russia are heavily controlled, heavily subsidized. So at the pump, Russians aren't seeing much of a difference. But undoubtedly, inflation is starting to bite here in Russia, like in much of the rest of the world. Uh, but much higher figures we're seeing here because of sanctions and those uh, logistical supply chain issues that I mentioned earlier. Uh, inflation at the moment is about 17 percent here in Russia, according to the central bank. Uh, a very high figure indeed, one that is really uh, biting uh, some of the poorest Russians around the country, uh, middle class Russians as well, really feeling it in their pockets. Uh, of course, flights have gotten more expensive, food products, as well as a number of other machinery products, uh, many of which can't simply be obtained anymore uh, from their uh, original sources because there have been sanctions against Russia importing certain technological products. Uh, so, yes, we are starting to see uh, quite a lot of economic pain uh, hitting ordinary Russians. And today, uh, we understand that President Vladimir Putin will be meeting with the state council to discuss whether uh, the indexation of pensions and the minimum wage should be raised by 10 percent uh, in order to alleviate some of that pain for ordinary Russians. But of course, the Kremlin uh, very keen to point out what they see uh, as the West being to blame for this rather than Russia's own actions. Julia, thank you very much for that comprehensive report. That is our Russia correspondent, Julia Chapman.